Hello, today we're going to try and cover the tube and pipe module of Autodesk Inventor. We're not going to go into details about setting up um, fittings, setting up um, styles, authoring fittings and so on. We're just going to try and go into uh, creating routes and runs and best practices on this. One of the first things that I like to do is have um, multi-character commands sort of like AutoCAD and a lot of my commands are the same as in AutoCAD because I switch in between so often and I like to keep it the same so let's start a tube and pipe at this point if you are gonna do detailed drawings of the tube and pipe you may want to considering renaming this so sort of 11-01 this will be my tube and pipe assembly. Now for the runs and the routes, don't change them, leave them as they are. I know a lot of you like to have um, the size of the run inside the name, but uh, you're gonna change it so often that you, you're gonna confuse your colleagues or whoever's gonna work on this. So just leave it as it is, it's a unique name anyway. Now the first thing that you want to do is go back to the top level assembly and constrain your tube and pipe. That's fine. Tube and pipe is adaptive and the geometry inside will change, but if you're not careful and you drag it by mistake, um, it will move. It's not constrained. So come back and constrain it and do the same thing on all the runs. Constrain. Now it's better. Now let's go back inside our run and create a new route. Leave the name as it is. Don't worry about it. Now you don't have to constrain this, but what I like to do is include geometry and include these three planes. Sorry, I think I've included the second one. No, it's fine. And make them auto resize. We'll use these to constrain our sketch, our 3D sketch, our root. You don't want to use um, planes from, from the assembly because you could uh, promote demote the assembly. You don't want to use faces because you could change the geometry, you could change the tank, the pump, everything. Uh, you just want to try and keep it local and constrain the, the route uh, as much as you can by itself, in itself. Now the next thing that you want to do is um, add your styles. I don't have any styles in my tube and pipe template and that's because I don't want to migrate um, the file every time a new inventor version um, is released. I want to keep it clean, keep it the way it is. I can just import my styles all the time, every time. So I'm going to import my style. I suggest that you do a style for each type of piping that you're doing. PVCU, stainless, ABS, whatever you're doing, just have a single style for that. Yeah, These are the styles that he's going to import. So let's activate our style and I'm going to edit this for you to show you that you need to keep the minimum length, minimum segment length to as, as low as possible. This way you can have consecutive fittings at different angles. You won't notice it in the drawing. You will have a very small pipe length, but um, you can have um, fittings at different angles one after the other. Now the next thing that I like to do, that's my inlet, that's my outlet from inside the plant room. I've extruded this to 0.1 millimeters so just so I can grab the edge. I could have done this with a 3D point but sometimes the point doesn't allow you to root um, in, in 
the direction you want. You're kind of stuck to whatever direction it wants. So the next thing that I like to do is I have a set of parameters for each size. PVCU 1.25 inch, I have a set of parameters for that. Let me just show you. I've created an assembly where I've placed my most common used um, fittings. I don't have them all in here. I'm at home, so I don't have the whole libraries, but I just wanted to show you how I've done it. Uh, so I created a sketch with the sizes and next to it, it was the most common uh, fittings that I'm using. Um, and then, and then I've created um, a set of parameters for each, which I'm importing uh, for every run. Let me just show you. Um, let's go. Let's go back and import one. So our size was 1.25. Let's import 1.25. Uh, What I have in here is a couple of parameters with sizes and a description. So the dimension here will tell me how much a ball valve will take, how much an elbow, uh, a check ball valve, uh, and so on and so on. And I have a gap as well. You will notice that I don't have a T. That's because in, in my case in here, the T and the elbow kind of have the same size. This is not the full size. This is half length because you'll see the node where the fitting drops in is at the middle of the fitting. So keep these the same. Don't change the name in here. Keep them the same, but change the description. This way I can make sure that I have the proper parameters imported. Okay, you, You'll see this in a second. But what I'm doing is, so PVCU, I've got all these parameters. Now, if I decide to change to say two inch, I can just import my two inch size and all the root will adapt and all the sizes, um, uh, dimensions will change. I can keep it tidy and um, this helps with uh, confined spaces when there's not a lot of room and you don't wanna keep changing the dimension until you get it just close enough. This way I have um, a five mil gap and it would always be a five mil gap in between the fittings. Now you can also add, if you want, um, sorry, a pipe clip or whatever. Uh, and I also have like a set of fittings, one after the other. So it's an elbow, elbow plus gap. It's easier to just type EEG in a dimension than just type E plus E plus GP. Anyway, um, let's go right. So you start with a root. I have root on a shortcut. Now, as soon as you go and you click on the edge, you have you press space bar to change direction. You don't have to for the first time. If you do decide to, the, if the arrow points up and you are going down, it's just gonna give you a negative dimension because it's gonna create a plane. Let's just try this. Yeah, and then go down. So it created a plane and it's dimensioning from that plane. So instead of, because the arrow was pointing up, the face of the plane was up. So in this case, I have a negative dimension. It's just a minor inconvenience, but let's go back. Undo root again, choose the bottom edge. And now press space bar to change direction. Yeah. Now, Let's zoom out a bit. If that's too small, you press plus or minus on the keyboard to increase the size. Now, uh, I want to go down about 100 mil. What I could do is right click and have enter distance, but you don't have to. Just leave your mouse there over your reference and type. Yeah. Now the triad appears and if you want to zoom out uh, and if it's too small, again, plus or minus to increase its size. Yeah. Uh, because I have a 45 degree elbow, I can also change this, change the angle to a 45. Yeah. If you didn't specify it in the, in the styles, um, a 45 degree elbow, you could only go 90. Uh, same thing. I want to go that way. Just leave your mouse over there and type your dimension. Um, the first thing that I like to do as soon as I start it, I right click and take off auto dimension. And let me just show you why. Um, say I want to dimension 
100 mil from that wall. I right click, point snap, leave your mouse there and you type your dimension. If you type 100, it'll go 100 over the wall. If you type minus 100, it'll go 100 to the wall. So minus 100, yeah, and done. I believe is the correct um, thing to do, not to not not to dimension from, from the wall, not to project it, because as soon as you change the wall, uh, the face there, you could lose the reference and then your root does not adapt. But what I like to do, I'd like to dimension them myself. And you'll see this with a lot of the experts. They, they always recommend don't put auto dimension. Now let's go back for a second. You can click on root or you can right click on the end of the, on one of the points and you have root in there as well. Yeah. So root. Now we want to come here. Again, just leave your mouse there and press space bar. To change direction if you decide to click because you want to try an auto route yeah and if you decide that there's a correct one as soon as you click finish you go inside you convert it to sketch the auto route tend to change itself even though you haven't changed any of the equipment you haven't changed the tank you haven't changed the room but the auto route will start moving so you don't want to have other routes. Just convert them to sketch. Let's go back. Again, root from this point. Let's increase this. Now the same with the angles. If you want to change the angle, you don't have to click. You can drag, but it's more difficult to kind of precisely position it. What I like to do is increase it to a reasonable size leave my mouse over it and then just type say what 35 yeah you got it and depending on the side of the arrow where your mouse is that's the direction it's going to change to so if i want to come back 35 i i hold my mouse here or there or there and so on you got it so 35 and we're back now again take auto dimension off this will only happen once, but because we, I've canceled the command and I've kept undoing uh, commands, uh, uh, it went back. So the auto dimension should not be on now. Point snap. Sorry. Point snap minus a hundred. Yeah. Now I know that I'm going to have a ball valve and then I'm going to have a T and then I'm going to have, um, pneumatic valve and then an elbow and so on until I come here um, just kind of click a couple of times don't worry about dimensioning just just insert some notes that's all you want to do for now let's have another one and then we know we're gonna come this way if I try to connect to the last point it's gonna give a weird option it never goes straight so most of the times I just start another route from this point. Just go, doesn't matter how much. Because um, it's a, a kind of a new route, yeah? It's, it's always going to put a dimension at the beginning, the first one. Um, so let's delete that. Okay. Now you want to try and constrain the route by itself with dimensions and uh, constraints, perpendicular, parallel, and so on, uh, uh, until you have it um, fully constrained. Um, if it's not possible, I mean, because uh, at times, no matter how many dimensions you put and how much you try to constrain it, it's, it's, it's not uh, going to be fully constrained. Don't worry about it. Just drag some of the points, the nodes, and if it's not moving, just leave it as it is. Now, the reason why I included these planes is so I can, if needed, use them as my reference to constraints. So perpendicular this to that plane and, and this line to that plane and so on and so on. You don't want to start projecting faces of the equipment. The faces can change. You can derive the part. You can change it for a different part. The face will not be there and you will lose the reference. So you want to try and keep it local. That's why we've included these planes. You don't want to include the planes of the main assembly. You can promote, demote the assembly. Just try and keep it 
by itself. Fully constrain the sketch by itself is possible. If not, use the planes from the run. Now let's see why I've used those parameters and how can we can we use them. Because I'm not gonna change the wall or even if it changes, um, I can always modify this dimension. It's only gonna be one dimension. So I can include geometry this wall. Yeah. And then dimension from there a hundred. Yeah, we always wanted that. Uh, but you will see it's better that inventor is not projecting the face and is not putting a dimension from my snap point. Yeah, it's it's good that it doesn't do that. We'll see in a second why. Now, if you want to make this perpendicular, don't do it on this plane. Yeah, just try and keep it to a minimum what you dimension and what you use an external reference that can change. If you know that your wall can change, then ignore uh, ignore it. Don't dimension off of it. Just use the main assembly. Because this is constrained flush, this is like the center. So what, what I would do, I, I don't know what sort of equ equipment you're having and what, what are you drawing, but you could have like a column center. And from there, keep those as your origin. And from there, you can dimension all your nodes and all your roots. Now, why have I used these parameters? In here, I know that I'm going to have an elbow right there, and then I'm going to have a ball valve here. So dimension, that's going to be an elbow plus ball valve plus gap. I also have an even simplified version than that. So it's EBG, which is elbow plus ball valve plus gap, because I use it so often, it's much faster to just say EBG. That's it. And I've done. The next is going to be the same thing, just because it's a, it's a T. The T in my case in is the same as the elbow um, dimension wise. So EBG again, Now in here, I have a pneumatic valve, which is kind of big. So I don't know exactly what the dimension is. I don't use it that often. Uh, it's not worth it to put it in here. I don't know, maybe it would in your case. Um, so I'm gonna dimension backwards. So I'm gonna say about 200. Don't know yet. I can always measure later. Now what you wanna do is connect these. So let's try and do, um, perpendicular and see if it works. The distance from here to here is more than a hundred. Um, so I'm just going to have weird angles. Just bear with me for a second. Sorry, not the line. I'll show you in a second why. So let's connect these. Yeah, you see it's skewed at an angle. We're going to fix that. So, um, Usually when you root and you change direction, it always going to add perpendicular one after the other, but you can always force it. So say you have, let me, let me try and start another one right here, just to kind of show you what I'm trying to say. How's that? That's, that's not that bad. So if you turn on constraints, these two are perpendicular and then these two and then these two, these two and so on and so on. So what you want to do is try and force some more constraints. So again, perpendicular and this is perpendicular on this one and this on that one, but we can always force these. So kind of, kind of skip one, these with that one. You, you, you see what I'm doing? Well, it didn't work. But now if I go back, if I should dimension these, yeah, 750, uh, don't know, 350. I should have a fully constrained sketch now. I'm just gonna put some dimensions. I may need to have, because that's a point, I may need to set this perpendicular to the base plane, 700. Uh, don't know, 300. Now, Let's try and set this perpendicular to ground floor. 
that's fully constrained yeah uh, now what you need is to kind of lock it on, in the other direction and that's a fully constrained sketch yeah so I've only used a couple of planes just the, the, the origin planes of the run yeah and uh, constrain some more the, the root itself let me delete this let's go back to ours so that's cute that's not so bad because that's an elbow that's another elbow it'll be fine but these valves will look weird on an angle see if we can set some more constraints now in this case I can set perpendicular this line or one of these lines into either this plane or that plane which it creates automatically now you can use this plane it's not so bad because if you're gonna change this you're gonna lose this point anyway but it's up to you how you want to play this you can also set this line parallel with one of these planes at the base yeah so let's try perpendicular this let's try on there that's not bad that's better now if I set this to say 200 because I'm gonna need a, a fitting in there let's try and drag it and see what else needs is, is still moving so nothing's moving yeah but it's still not fully constrained at this point no matter how many constraints or dimension you add you may never get it to be fully constrained don't worry about it if you drag it and it's not moving it's not so bad you kind of done what you could now turn these planes off don't be lazy I know a lot of you like to go into view and turn object visibility just think about doing this in large assemblies and how time-consuming it is so the, the the next thing that I like to do I don't like to finish root and start populating it I just go all the way to the top level assembly and save it save it before you populate if you go into errors errors or the inventor crashes you've lo lost all this so now you can go back just play it safe and then populate good it's not so bad one more thing that I like to do especially when starting a new route a new run and a new project I have a text document with folders of my most common used fittings these are not fittings authored in uh, and published in content center these are parts that I've downloaded off the internet and that I like to uh, have it in here I copied the path and I just go place fitting and I just paste it in here and I'm already there yeah you've you've saw what I've done all right getting there so um, if you're not familiar with 2 pipe, you can drop this anywhere it's no problem but I like to have my notes preset already so it snaps to these nodes yeah okay let's drop it in there not bad now plus again or minus hold your mouse over the direction type 90 or whatever you want let's go another 90 it's fine this is the easiest way at this point um, you can always always press space bar to change fitting orientation yeah I don't know if it makes a lot of sense in here because it's a ball valve but you can see it changing it at this point if you decide that you need more gap or you, or you want to change the position even though we inserted a point yeah and we dimension that remember the elbow uh, the ball valve gap which is a five mil there that we should have if you decide that you want to position it differently you right click point snap and you have again just as we've done before you can select the face and dimension out of that face um, you can also select a plane if you want let me just go down where's that plane yeah so I can select that if I want I only had five million there so uh, at this point you hold your mouse there and you start typing 125 now this is gonna be 
uh, dimension from the center from the node to that face yeah so I said let, let's go less let's go we had five so let's go 20 so distance from that face is not gonna project the face it's not gonna use that as dimension it's still gonna dimension to the end yeah we'll see that in a second so 20 oh I guess I should have went minus 20 didn't I anyway you've got the idea um, so, so at any point, when you drop a fitting, whatever it is, you can also change its position, yeah, on the fly. So you don't have to go back. The bad part about this is, if you go inside, remember that nice uh, parameter that we had in? That's changed, and that's obvious. I mean, I don't expect Inventor to change my parameter, yeah, and I've lost it in here as well, but. It, it, it's not a big deal you double click and you probably have it under the last uh, the last one used if you didn't do it that much so uh, what was it EBG wasn't it yep and then the same thing in here EBG that's fine and I can go up again now when I place uh, content center items what I like to do is I go into uh, sorry I gotta finish this I like to go into content center and then add to favorites all my favorites uh, elbows tees and the most common uh, content center items this way I'm in here I need to place a T I'll just go to favorites and I have them in here now at some point uh, uh, Autodesk changed in favorites you would only have your favorites I don't want to load the whole content center in here but it's okay you can create a new favorites group so you'll have one for I don't know machining one for structural shapes one for tube and pipe uh, but I can just double click in here um, a standard and you drop it in again plus to increase these because otherwise your mouse can jump or can move if it's on a slope or something so kind of increase this to be safe enough yeah and then in that direction go 90 I want to go back 90 oh I didn't choose the right size did I so change size it was 1.5 that's 40 and this is it and can you see the gap there it is the same and it looks nice and like I said it's good in confined spaces I don't have my space navigator with me it is jumping um, but it's looking nice that's why it's good to set up your parameters it, it only takes uh, time when you do it the first time and then you'll reuse it and reuse it yeah so yes you'll spend a bit of time to 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 set up those parameters but you'll have it now let's um, let me show you something else this is something that's not recommended I mean it's not presented as standard option but what if I want let me just show you this I have another inlet and what I want is a bypass if this valve fails or something happens um, I want to be able to do a bypass there uh, let's just try and place this valve first it'll look place fitting I already have the path on my uh, clipboard so let's drop it in come on yeah increase the arrows a bit a little more I want to come this way 90 and I don't like it it's got the connection against the wall press spacebar there you go that's good that's nice all right done that's that's not the right size probably this whole uh, this whole run was a different size never mind you got the, the, the idea you kind of know what I'm trying to do here now uh, we were talking about doing branches so first of all let's save everything uh, save it as often as you can all right now go back what if I want to do a branch in here well Eventor doesn't like branches but we'll force it so we're gonna start out of this point go there 100 to the wall then go down go to underneath have another valve there yeah so root sorry go in that direction um, point snap would not help because it's it's on an inclined uh, 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 
line so just kind of go there and then I want to go ah, sorry I picked the wrong thing root it's gonna go minus all right stop there for a second now let me turn my planes back on so um, perpendicular this into this line as well oh you see what I've done there it was already perpendicular to this one now the only thing that's missing it's a dimension to dimension this point this node you see it yeah that's the only thing that's keeping this from being fully constrained also let me remove that and go again dimension a hundred I could reference it yeah good thank you and then we're gonna go this way let's um, perpendicular to face that's where I want to go then I'm gonna go up to there that's gonna be a ball valve and then I'm coming here just like on I'm gonna have a T there so we're gonna connect now you could cheat you cannot connect these two points any any two points yeah to kind of make a branch it already went into violations so that's not allowed go back you could cheat and you can have coincident constraint between this point and that line and then the other point with this line yeah it's not gonna complain now but as soon as you try and populate this route is gonna complain is gonna throw you back in here to fix this so let's go back now we're gonna do just half of that version coins in then this with that yeah are you with me and then dimension in here that's gonna be a T or an elbow and then in here I'm gonna have gap plus elbow I'm just gonna leave it up in the air no one's gonna notice uh, let me try and drag this and make sure that everything's fully constrained went bad uh, let's dimension this that's gonna be an uh, elbow ball valve and gap I'm only doing this because the second uh, root is the same size as the first one so it's not gonna be a problem uh, generating populating all this yeah now this is fully constrained now if you start dragging you gotta turn off constraints if you have uh, let me just if you have constraints on it's gonna pick on the points so you won't be able to drag so turn off constraints and then start dragging just to kind of see if it's moving or not yeah it's not um, it will however jump onto the other side with this let me just try and force it see if I can Try this side. There we go. You see it? It kept the distance. It kept 47. That's the distance, but it jumped on the other side. Now let's go back. That's the only problem. Now you need to make make sure about this and make sure that it doesn't happen. I mean, there's nothing you can do about this. I haven't found a way. Um, it's not complaining we don't have any violations so let me just finish my route and see what's going on oh that's good that's lovely thank you replace this in here place fitting you see what I've done I've just selected it and then place fitting so it's right there to drop it perfect and because I kept the distance it's looking good I should probably move this to kind of the same distance there as long as they can take it out of the line and as long as you leave some uh, room for pipe clips but it's looking good kind of the same distance all over yeah and that's why you use the parameter now um, we gave a different name to the tube and pipe assembly we specifically called it a, a, a dash 01 instead of leaving it as tube and pipe because at some point you may want to do a drawing if you the drawing of the tube and pipe 
you're making as part of the layout of the main assembly, kind of doing separate sheets, but you know, having this part number, then it's fine. But if you want to create a drawing by itself, you, you, you give it a new number. Yeah. And, um, question here is how do you set up level of details and design view representation so that you can have say this bit of root on its first sheet and the other one on the second sheet and maybe uh, the whole tube and pipe on the first sheet um, if you look into the um, tube pipe you only have level of detail uh, so let me show you a trick What you can do is you can open it up. If you want to set up a, a level of detail and representation for each run, because you can have multiple routes, yeah. And if you want to set up a, a, a level of detail and representation for each run, you you count in here. So do the same thing. You can open it up, yeah. Uh, representation let's call that um, root one it won't allow you to save it this is a trick it doesn't matter let me just copy this to my level of detail and I can activate that and I can it's gonna take a second to take this off now I'm inside of the run when I try to save it it doesn't allow me it doesn't matter uh, we have it open in here or in here so as long as you you do the changes in here that you want to do like IDs because that's what we wanted to do go on disappear right so we've got these you can't save it in here, but as long as you have it open, you can save it in here and everything will save. Yeah. Let me just close the device. So save it in here and it's fine. All these changes are in there now. Yeah, I know. I don't care. Just close it. it it's still open. It's still in memory. So now if I save it, it'll be saved. So that's the trick. So you can open it separately and set up your level of details and uh, design view representation in there, but come back and save it in here in the main assembly. Now let's do a couple of more branches. I'm sure um, uh, there's, there's going to be just a few problems with that. Um, see, this room is in the way. So what I'm going to do is disable it this way. It's not pickable as a, as a geometry. It's not going to snap to it, but be careful about this because <laughs> um, if you forget about it and you want to use it as geometry, I mean, you will pull your hair out. So let's go back. And what I'm going to do is create another run and I'll show you why. And we're going to do a different size. Let's do one inch, create another run, leave the name, forget about it. Don't, don't even try and change that. So um, again, root. No, I haven't created the root, have I? Root, start from that point, kind of go out until a ball valve, leave a bit of room for it, for the fitting there. Take off auto dimension, then go down. Down, root again. Uh, yeah, auto dimension is off, good, I was just verifying that. Kind of go to the ball valve and then some more. Hmm, I haven't left room in here, haven't I? So I can delete that root again. Um, oh, I'm not following my uh, practices, am I? Uh, let me go back and constrain it. Constrain. It's fine. This, with that. Let me minimize this a bit. There's a couple of iLogic that I need to show you later. Um, and this with that, yeah. And then go back and, like I said, first thing, include geometry, these three planes, and make them auto resize. Oh, yeah, all right, okay, thank you, lovely. You see that? 
I don't have it. I don't want to have it too big, too small. Just kind of the right size. Now I've done this. I can delete these. It always put a dimension when you start a new uh, a new route or for a new connection. So let me see if I can perpendicular this into that. Eh, it doesn't need to, but I can coincide these two points. Okay. Now uh, import my parameters. Uh, what am I? Just go into tube and pipe uh, parameters and get the one inch. It's fine. I have an EBG there. And then you could have, you can either click in there, but watch, it's right there in the last use. So uh, I don't tend to use uh, 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 other dimensions because if that dimension gets deleted, and I'll show you in a second when that can happen. When, when that dimension gets deleted, all these will remain orphans. So, dimension that, because we kind of want 350, sorry, that a little too much. And that's fully constrained, yes? Okay, let's try the other end now. Change direction, go out a little more, come up, do the same thing to the bolt valve, and then some more. Get rid of all this. I didn't ask you for those. Coincide these two points and then give it you there and then there. And I should still need that. Oh, sorry. It's in the other way, so it's going to be minus that dimension. Okay, fully constrained. Yes, now the problem is. That's got to be a T, and I've got to come from around the corner from there, where I have a flow indicator coming down from behind the pump and so on. And then from here, it needs to go into a T, sample valve and pressure gauge and so on, into the next, to the filters, to the next uh, equipment. How am I going to do that? Let's try root. I can't pick on these. That's fully, that's, I mean, it's fully constrained. There's nothing I can do. At this point, get creative. Just kind of use anything that you can, any edge, anywhere. Yeah. So let me choose, uh, try that, watch this. I'm just going to increase that, go up a little more, some more. Yeah, that's fine. I can delete this now and the point and the plane and the point and just dimension these roughly. How much was it? 180. that it's this I miss my mouse um, I usually have uh, escape and enter at my uh, thumb uh, 180 do that again 180 now call linear this with that oh that's not bad now go down are you with me in fact, I think I used the wrong reference because these last ones are probably going to delete or change. So I should have done collinear between this and that one. It's not so bad. Dimension. That's going to be an elbow or a T there. Not bad. Why did this change to from fully constrained? I do not know. Mystery. Ignore it. Oh, I guess I know why, because you can drag this above yeah so let's undo that for a second uh, I can delete that and let's do it proper collinear in between this and that okay now from here probably need to go in there somewhere I don't care for now uh, let me turn these off because I don't need them oh we need to do the same thing in there so I'm gonna come that way and a little more. Just do a couple, yeah, and then delete the last one. And then the problem is you gotta dimension them, otherwise they might overlap, jump one one over the other. And then sorry, collinear to that one. And then let me drag it this way. And I'm having oh, sorry an elbow or a T 
What are you doing? Oh, dimension from here to there. Level. Okay, it's not bad. I don't really need that. Um, so I'm gonna have a T there, and then I need to go that way, and then come down. So I'm gonna have an elbow elbow gap in there. But actually, I already have the elbow, so it's gonna be an elbow gap. And I'm gonna have an elbow elbow gap in there. Yeah. And another one there. But you see how easy it is when I have these as parameters? Now, what did we say? Perpendicular, this kind of jump one. Whenever it changes direction, use that one. And then, sorry, let me dimension that. Just kind of go down. Uh, let me see. It can still rotate this way. So let's try, let me see if this works. It worked. It can still come that way. Uh, that's perpendicular to that one. What else can I do in here? Can I do... Brilliant, isn't it? And it's all by itself. Now, of course, if you delete uh, 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 one of the lines uh, or you insert nodes, you may need to reconstrain it, but it's better to have it all by itself than floating around based on geometry that may not be there at the end. Now, another trick. I don't like to use reference dimensions like I've showed you, uh, as in, if this is referenced by that one, yeah? Let me just put a uh, elbow there and this. I just want to show you how to deal with reference dimensions when they break. So, say it's going, it's overlapping. I'm not sure if you can see this. That's one and that's the other one and it's 39, but it's 39 above. So they're overlapping. What are you going to do? This is a simple case where you can just drag down, but you, you could have that... Um, these two are overlapping. So what are you doing then? You don't want to delete the dimension because if you delete this and it's being reused, then all the others remain orphans and they lose the reference. So what do you do? You select it and then you go into 3D sketch. Yes, I'm not in the root. I'm in the 3D sketch and you set it as driven dimension. Yeah. This way I can freely drag it to whatever I want and then you can just press space bar because it's repeat last command, which was repeat driven dimension, and it's back to a value. Yeah, I can. I, I still need to type my dimension in, but at least this hasn't lost reference. This is still D15 because I normally I would have deleted it and uh, uh, put another dimension there, but then all these have lo have would have lost reference. Oh, it's getting late <laughs> now. Uh, again, all the way up, I don't populate it, save, save, you don't want to lose all this, save it. You never know, it may crash. Now you can go back and run to and populate the route. And now I'm going to show you how to drop a couple of fittings real quick. Um, I'm not going to use this, the text anymore, I'm just going to try and use whatever we have in the assembly. See, I need a T there, I need a ball valve there, I need ball valve, TT, and so on and so on, yeah? Now, I've already placed some Ts. They're a different size and they're in a different route. I cannot pick them up, so what do you do? Well, you actually activate the select in here, but, but you can always use the, the keyboard like I do. Just hold down Shift and right click. And this way you can choose between part priority future and so on and so on yeah so you cannot pick it now because it's in a it's in a different assembly from its point of view a different run but i'm going to need that valve i'm not going to need that size i'm just going to need one that's in the same folder so watch this right click part priority now i can select it right click i properties real quick copy the path just Control c use the use the keyboard guys I can't, I can't tell you how, how helpful this is. So I've got the path. Now I can choose place fitting. Just paste the path, get a 25 and drop it and drop it once. Increase the arrows and change to 180. Fine. 
and continue and drop it twice. Now the, 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 the room is not in the way because it's not enabled, it's not pickable. So I can drop it again, increase the size. My mouse tends to move, so I need these really big. A couple of pluses on the keyboard should, should help. Now, if it was aligned the other way, just press space bar, yeah? No biggie. Okay, continue and drop it in there. Let me see, is it looking the same? Yeah, with kind of the big side on the outside. It just needs to look, uh, oh, place fitting, drop it in there. Done. Now I need a T, what am I gonna do? Same thing. Uh, well, actually, let me show you something else now. Um, at times, at times, I don't know why, it's just a random behavior. You not, you may not be able to pick any of these. Although you are on part priority, you won't be able to pick them. Don't go crazy, just choose part priority again. That's right, just choose part priority again and it will work. Don't ask me why, it's just try and, 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 and use part priority again. And if you're inside the assembly, sometimes picking these won't work, so you gotta use component priority because it's in the same run, yeah? Anyway, just play with this. Now, I need an elbow. Uh, sorry, a T, uh, getting tired. So I've got that place fitting. You've got two options. You either drop it up in the air somewhere, change size, then pick it again, and then drop it in, or I don't bother. I just drop it in. Um, you can either click and then press space bar to change the, the, the orientation, or you can just press space bar now, yeah? So I could drop it in and then use spacebar or I could have used a, a change orientation before. Now, done. As soon as you place it, then you use CS, change size, keyboard guys. And we're gonna go 32 again. Why did you do that? Um, edit, edit fitting orientation. Ta-da, done. And I have the proper gap there, and it's all nice, looking good. Now, let's do that again. Place fitting, drop it in there, change direction, go in there. Done. Uh, do it again. Drop it in there. Increase the size a bit. Uh, go that way, 90. That's where I want to have it. Now I need another... I usually don't place all the pipes and everything. I kind of tend to, no one will be able to see in inside the fitting. Watch this, um, connect in here. Zoom in, a um, bit too much. Go 180, yeah, and then done. And then I can change size to a half inch. And then what you want to do is adding fitting connection. What is that? Uh, like I said, it's getting it's getting late. Uh, no, I, I actually want the user defined. I want it on zero. This will bring it out a bit, yeah. And then I can, I can, yeah. I'm, I'm working behind you guys. Um, I've copied the path before, um, so I can drop it in there and make this bigger, please. Just go ninety. That's, that's done, and then I can, that's the last thing we're gonna do, I just wanna show, show you how quickly you can do this, done, nice fitting, same place, where is the sample valve, yep, uh, connect in there, and you're done, yeah, all right, um, now I think we covered enough, or maybe um, as much as we we, we, we can at the, at the moment. Uh, by the way, this is Inventor 2015 um, and we are pushing for some changes. We already uh, um, got response from Autodesk about uh, doing some changes. Uh, like say in here, if you need to go on a different size, just kind of to the end uh, with a fitting, you should be able in 2016 to select multiple components and then you can change size. Um, I know you can change diameter now, 
but that's not available for for all the fittings so it's like if you choose valve or other parts from content center uh it, the the change diameter is not available now so if you select more than one then the change size uh, when you right click oh, let me just uh when you right click the change size is not available but it should work from 2016. if you need to go to say a sample valve or something else you have another bit of pipe there or you need to show um, a reducer i would not create a different uh, route i would just change the size for it right here i mean you don't you don't want to keep it too complicated in here yeah we're talking about setting up a level of details and view representations this should be just good enough yeah so that's about it now uh, uh, let me just ask you how do you do tags component tags valve tags you know on a pnid the same valve uh, can have uh, different identification numbers we start our valve uh, uh, tags at 100 and uh, uh, instrumentation at 500 so uh, but how do you do that in here this is the same part i'm not going to start putting it in uh, i don't know i properties uh, this is crazy uh, i mean you can go to up to i don't know 300 valves on the same pnid so what do you do the secret is or what i found is um you can use the browser name or let me just show you this the occurrence name so it's kind of the nickname that the assembly give to this component to keep it unique that's just a nickname that's inside the assembly but you can use that as a uh, tagging now even if you're on part priority you cannot change occurrence from uh, a different assembly you need to be inside that assembly but uh, luckily i have created a bit of code um, it's free on the internet it's free on my blog uh, you can find it where you can just change tags on the fly let me show you that right i've loaded my rule here's the rule it's very 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 simple it says for whatever you pick in the assembly ask for <laughs> for the tag yeah so let's run this okay pick something that one what's that Oh, that's gonna be a valve 101 sorry capital v v 101 what's that one that's a v 102 yeah and then when you're finished or when it gets into an error you, you just escape um now let's look at the eye properties even though i'm on a different assembly it's still gonna put the name there yeah and then it's still gonna be there let's run it again if in here oh it already tells me that it's 101 do you want to change it for something else? if in here you click cancel it's going to default it's going to go back to default so good <laughs> that's what i wanted i didn't intend this to happen but it, it does so lucky us okay and then let's try uh, and do that was uh say v105 let's start at five and v106 because i need to show you how to get this into the drawing we've got a, a, a different bit of code for uh, getting all this into the drawing i forgot where was i eight i don't know ten <laughs> let's say ten uh, you're distracting me guys okay uh save now let's create a level of detail we'll, we'll get just this into the drawing this is too big uh, so uh, let's isolate all this just this that's what we want and let's do sorry uh, new we're gonna call this um, tags uh, damn it tags one um, copy to level of detail please okay let's activate that as well I just want to make sure there's nothing in here come on do you want to change it yes yes like i said on my the mouse that i have at work i have enter and escape at my thumb it's much easier uh, plus this is a laptop mouse so it's really small right save now let's go into all right so i've created a drawing with a couple of views uh uh just keep going into raster mode uh, so 
what you want to do is right click include root center Ta-da! and then dimension you kind of have the dimension there now if you want to keep it neat oh, i haven't set up my styles look at all, all that precision doesn't matter so uh, if you want to keep it neat i think i'm gonna have to shut it down and start again because even though i'm taking it off it's still there and we're back i told you i had to shut down inventor now dimension dimension that oh i don't like that why is he doing that so right click annotation plane show all part work planes of what of the elbow i'm gonna use that use it in there and then do that that's not good annotation plane show all part work planes do that i like that why can't you do that that's not bad now um I'm getting tired guys Ta -da. and then right at the end where well, you don't have to do this you probably have your style set up correctly um, just change it to zero what zero and then copy properties on all these yeah and that's how you align them um, I should have probably left it uh, kind of horizontal in that plane um, it would have looked better but uh, so you gotta go into your run right click include root centers yeah and that's the way to dimension you can also dimension like from there to come on um, there yeah Ta -da. and you can also change plane and play with this this is how you get it in now uh, we've done all that tagging inside the assembly but how do we get it in here well, the only thing, uh, the only way I could think of is to create a custom balloon. Um, I don't want to mess up the balloons uh, for the items parts list, so I've created a new balloon. Actually, I've created a new balloon style. Come on, it's called tags, and it's of type hexagon, and it only has item in it. You'll see, it only has item. That's it. Um, why did I have to do that? Well, because the code that we have to bring in uh, uh, the values from the assembly um, will process the balloons, but only if the balloons have the name tag in it. The style, sorry, the style has uh, the name ta uh, tags. Because you don't want to process all the balloons. Uh, you may want to do a parts list. You don't want to mess that up. Okay, so balloon don't use auto balloon just use manual balloon that way if you use manual balloon yes all levels annotate um, format i'm going to choose tags i want that to be of type tags when you use manual balloon you can even balloon the same thing multiple times Yeah. Okay. Save this. And then we have the code for doing the tags. This is a little more complicated because it's processing all the sheets and it's got two options. Let's try and run it. So, do you want to get it from the browser, from the assembly browser, or do you want to get it from the balloon? I want to get it from the browser sometimes it cannot process all the balloons that's because i don't know it, it, it cannot get all the reference geometry so you just just change your point drag it to a different point if you cannot get the value in here if it still says 14 or whatever the number is just choose another point now let me show you why uh, the other option so i'm going to sheet number two and we're gonna balloon and we're gonna balloon tags tags tag. so run get it from the browser get it in here as well now balloon again sorry about the confusion i just want to show you this uh tags and we said this we wanted v200 what i'm trying to say is you can you don't have to do it in the assembly i find it easier to do it in assembly in 3d uh, you can do it in here just place the balloon first and then that was what? V107, yeah? And then run the code 
get it from the balloon, send it to the to the assembly. So if I open the where am I? Uh, if I open the assembly, let's check that part priority. That is V two hundred. I just need to get back into <laughs> into the drawing. But what I'm saying is, you can you you can send it from the drawing. So get it from the browser now. That's two hundred. Yeah, and that's how I do tags. And that's about it. I'm sure I've left a lot of the things out, and that's why I want your comments. And uh, we want to see how you're doing uh, all this stuff. Uh, what's your best practices? Uh, don't be shy. Send us an email uh, and. You know, go 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 to the to the blog. Uh, this is my blog. I don't know who this guy is, but there's a lot of good info in here. Uh, that's the blog, right there. Blog ads.sol.com. Uh, what I told you about multiple change size. It's been accepted. It's going to be implemented in uh, to 2016. Um, so there's a lot of good info in here. Also, going to um, Chris's website. Um, he's a speaker and trainer uh, at Autodesk University, and he's got a lot of good info about. Let me show you that. That's nice. About uh, tube and pipe, um, and also go go to the blog to the inventor. Uh, uh, sorry, to the forum to the inventor forum. Uh, there's a lot of good info in there as well. So. CAD trips, CAD tips, tricks, wordpress.com. Sorry, Chris. They'll get it. Don't worry. Uh, thanks for watching.